Hey, Math 250 D students. I uh, just wanted to put together a quick little video about something called Kramer's Rule. Um, this is a way of solving linear systems without having to do a lot of EROs, but instead using the determinant material that we just learned in Chapter 3. I didn't quite have enough time to show this to you in class on Wednesday, it does come up on the homework assignment that you're going to be doing for Monday, February 23rd. Uh, I will be back on Sunday, so if you, know, you don't want to watch the full video, you can always just um, ask me about this on Sunday or Monday. Um, but I do want you to know uh, what I'm going to be talking about, because it gets used a lot in engineering classes. So this is a nice application of determinants um, to solving linear systems. So here's the setup. You know, suppose you have the usual linear system. We've written this down many times, right? The coefficient matrix A, X has my unknowns in it. This is what we're, this is what I'm trying to solve for, and B is on the right hand side. And so this linear system, of course, it either has no solutions, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. Okay, um, because A is invert, I'm going to assume that A is invertible. Okay, so if A is not invertible, then nothing that I'm saying really can, can apply. But let's suppose that you have a square n by n matrix and it's invertible. Okay, it happens to be invertible. Um, then, of course, we already know that of those three options, no solution, one solution, or infinitely many, we know that there's exactly one solution. And the solution, we, are, we even know what it is, the solution for x is A inverse times B. Right? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with um, just calculating the unknown vector x in that manner. The only thing is that you do have to find the whole matrix A inverse, right? So that's another chore that, um, you know, we've, we've had to deal with. And we know how to find inverses of matrices if they're small, but it's still kind of a, a pain to have to do that sometimes. So there's an alternative, and that's what this uh, Kramer's rule is about. It gives us an alternative method for finding this, this one unique unknown solution that we have here. Okay, so Kramer's rule allows us to find x without computing the inverse of the matrix. Okay? So without actually having to calculate the whole inverse. So this is kind of cool. We're going to use determinants instead. Okay? So here's basically, I'm going to give you the answer, and then we'll just try an example. Okay? So um, the answer is that <coughs> we have, first of all, the x is the, this vector of unknowns. This is just a column of, of variables here. Okay, x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn, where x sub k, so the kth, so these, these are the unknowns that you're looking for. So each one of them has a nice formula, okay? And here's the way the formula looks. You have to put the determinant of the original matrix on the bottom. And assuming that A is invertible, then that denominator will be not zero, right? So we're okay with that. Um, and then the question is, what goes on top? And here's the, here's the answer. You have to do another determinant. This time, you do the determinant of a matrix that I'm going to call B sub K, right? So this is going to be the very important equation. And what is B sub K? B sub K is very simple. All you do is you take the matrix capital A, the original capital A, square matrix, n by n, and in the kth column, in the kth column, which is somewhere along here, right, you replace the kth column of capital A so you put capital A here, capital A here, you leave this original matrix, but in the kth column, you substitute the right-hand side vector B. That's this B right here, which has the entries B1, B2, B3, and so on. And you just stick it in there, okay? And the determinant of that matrix goes on top, and the determinant of the original matrix goes on the bottom, okay? So it's very, very simple. Let me um, just run through a quick example, and then you'll be all set. I don't need to dwell on this for too long here. Um, so suppose, as an example, that we have the system 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 equals negative 1, and 2x1 minus x2 plus x3 
equals negative 1. And 5x2 plus 5x3 equals negative 5. So let's take this system. Okay? Um, of course, it's just a 3 by 3 matrix, so um, yeah, everything's going to be 3 by 3, so these determinants won't be, won't be too hard to find. So for example, the matrix capital A in this case is going to have 3, 1, and 2 on the top, and then 2, negative 1, and 1, and then 0, and 5, and 5. Okay? And the B vector, which is the right-hand side, is, is just these numbers here, negative 1, negative 1, negative 5. Okay? So, I don't know if you recognize this matrix, uh, maybe not. We actually used it in class on Wednesday, February 18th, as an example of finding a determinant. Um, so you can find this in your notes, but really you could just practice again what the determinant is. You can either use the arrow method for a 3 by 3, or you can um, use cofactor expansion. I'm just going to tell you, uh, or remind you if you remember it, that the answer is negative 20. Okay? So we're going to take advantage of that. I'm not going to actually show a lot of work on finding these determinants because I'm going to let you guys practice that. Okay, but I just want to make sure you understand the process. So let's talk about B1 real quick. So for B1, we're going to take the determinant of the matrix that we get. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to take the first column of A and replace it with the B vector. So there's the B vector in the first column. And then the second and third columns of capital A don't change at all. Okay, so we just have that. And I'm going to let you guys check this, because it's a 3 by 3, so it's not too hard to find. I just want you to check on your own that the determinant is negative 10. Okay? Now let's do B2. B2 is, the only difference is that now the second column is going to be the one that we replace with the, uh, the B vector. Right? And the first column of A stays the same as it was originally. And the third column stays the same as it was originally. And if you work that out, it just by a pure coincidence, it also comes out to negative 10. Okay? I'll let you guys check that, though. Okay, so that's that. And then finally, just a little bit more room here. Let's see if I can put it right here. For the B3, the B3 matrix, um, all I have to do now is I leave the first two columns of A as they were. And now it's the third column that I replace with B. And I'm just going to tell you that the answer that you get here is, uh, sorry, it is 30. I'll let you guys check that. Okay? So now we can find x1, x2, and x3. Okay? So the solution, the solution is x1, x2, x3. So what is x1? x1 is negative 10 over negative 20, which is 1 half. And x2 is negative 10 over negative 20 is 1 half. I'm just using this formula that's in the box here, right? And then for x3, I'm going to take 30 and divide it by negative 20, and that gives me negative 3 halves. So here is my unique solution. I never had to do one elementary row operation at all. Um, I know there's going to be a unique solution. Of course, you can check. If you don't believe me, you can always check that uh, this actually does work in all three equations. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you as a, a Kramer's rule, right? So Kramer's rule, this is just a method for solving a system of equations when you have a square matrix and when that matrix is invertible. If the matrix is not square or if it's not invertible, you can't use any of this. The good news is a lot of times you are dealing with problems where you do have an invertible coefficient matrix. So. Let me know if there's any questions on Kramer's rule. Just wanted to give you a jump, jump start on that topic in case you're uh, looking at Monday's homework. All right, thanks.